Hello everybody, this is Frank coming at you with some more audio commentary of League of Legends. Today we're going to be following the third and final game that was sent to me by VVV and Axmander. This is going to be a high ranking uh, game, this is a high ELO game here. Of course we are following uh, the vein here of an Axmander, who after looking through the team comp, I am, I believe, safely going to say that he is the range AD for the team. And uh, you know, this is going to be fantastic to watch yet another vein game. And uh, like I said, top ELO stuff, some of these guys I can sort of recognize from some of the games that I've, pr uh, I've casted previous. Um, most notably, of course, though, is actually um, Anax Mander himself, even without seeing this. Uh, wow, I've actually got some stri little really funky health bars. Hopefully that doesn't play uh, too big of a, an effect here throughout the game. But... Uh, Either way, it's going to be cool to have that, but yeah, most notably across all of these teams, even without knowing where this was sent from, I would have to argue that uh, Anaxmander is certainly the most notable. So just taking a look at what uh, build he's going for, he's actually getting the, the Boots 3 health potions, and what I, something that I've noticed actually is that Anaxmander actually has uh, pretty like pretty cool builds. I, I like Typically I would see Vayne's go for a, uh, a Doran's Blade in this position here, but with the 63 starting attack power, yeah, you can see plus 10 already attack damage, so uh, you know that it, within those Masteries and Rune Pages, um, basically he's he's got, you know, these initial 10 attack damage, so he doesn't actually need a Doran's Blade. If you guys have watched my Tristana, actually, wow, we've, we've got Kog'Maw getting caught out here, and this is definitely going to be a dead Kog'Maw, really unfortunate, and uh, Anax Manor picking up his E first, to uh, take out the uh, the Kog'Maw there, and we do have these really funky health bars, but um, I don't think there's anything I can do about that. So yeah, it looks like First Blood is going to go down to... Uh, actually, let me take a look at this specifically to see who that was. Yeah, that was Vlad, but still a uh, an assist going across three characters, not going across the Alistar, which is perfectly fine, because Alistar is actually the least... It's the, uh, the one that least needs the gold, basically. And that's really interesting that Kog'Maw was even there. I don't know why he would be standing right here, but I think maybe he was standing here, and then he got caught out, and then he decided to flash this way, where he actually would have been better off to just flash over this wall, and he would have been able to at least make it to a bush and to a tower, but that was, yeah, really, really silly there. I don't know exactly, like, these guys are talking about, like, nobody knows exactly what's uh, going on there. So yeah, really funky health bars. It's kind of cool. I don't know what uh, is going on, but either way, you guys are gonna see like uh, this like alien view here of uh, these health bars. Unless I can. Okay, I'm gonna take them off the creeps at least, so because that was a little bit distracting. Um, and I'm actually gonna see if I can <clears throat> get rid of these. No, I don't even know what to do here. Let me give me two seconds here. I'm gonna see if I can find a way. No, I think we're gonna actually just have to live with it. You can still see the health bars. This, uh, this, these bars here actually aren't the health bars, but um, you can still see them. And you can see where Vayne is uh, picking up CS and whatnot. So yeah, it looks like uh, just taking a look at these team, the team compositions here. Yeah, up at top lane we've actually got the uh, Riven versus Wukong. In the middle here we've got Vlad versus Annie, and this is gonna be really fun to watch. Um, specifically because Annie actually isn't seen all that much anymore, but wow, a lot of uh, damage coming out here. Vlad using his E, and that's going to get him um, pretty low there, but using uh, Summoner Heal and uh, his Q to get back up there. So now the Ignite is down for Annie, as well as Annie's gone down to 150 mana now, so that's going to be really, really crazy there. As bottom lane actually gets picked off, it was the uh, Kogma who actually got killed yet again. So Vayne is actually going to go up here to two kills, or sorry, to um, two assists, and the kill actually went off on the the Alistar. Really unfortunate there, and actually, yeah, you can see the red bars tick down when they do take damage, so I, re I really do apologize, guys, for the quality of this, but um, it's just something, like, really messed up. I think it was just because the replay file got tossed around so much in the, like, it just got tossed around in, the, in an email, and uh, it potentially could have gotten a little bit funky from that but uh, yeah, so Kog'Maw, level 2 comparatively to the both double level 3 of the enemy team. That's going to be really tough for him to come back from. He definitely needs those abilities. And when you level up his W, his out damage output is just absolutely silly. Not to mention it gives you a more consistent poke and a safer poke. So really interesting there. But we've, we do have actually Nocturne in the jungle 
as opposed to the um, Lee Sin and the enemy jungle. So uh, teams are pretty well balanced here, actually. You've got the same, basically, type of damage in top and jungle lane, which is typically not the case. Usually you'll have, like, an Amumu who's going to do mostly attack damage, or you'll have uh, Ramus, or sorry, I mean magic damage, and what have you, but it actually looks like a double gank going up across the top here. Nocturne and Lee Sin are both in the uh, in the top lane, trying to get done what they can, and uh, Nocturne just taking out that one creep. So yeah, this but this mid lane, I want to go back to this, uh, talking about this. This is actually a really interesting lane. You actually don't see Annie's that, that much anymore. And another gank, I keep missing all the action that's going on across here. I saw, I saw Lee Sin up top for a very, very long time, so I thought he was basically not going to be able to pull anything off there. But uh, unfortunately, he did. So Nocturne's going to have to go up top and cover, uh, cover that top lane. But yeah, one more, I just want to try this one more time here while there's... You know, hopefully no action for the next couple of seconds, uh, unless it's in mid lane. But yeah, this lane here is actually going to be really interesting. Vlad is a character you don't see very often. Um, you basically, your build is like predestined for you, and there's not really, you don't really get much say about it. While the Nocturne actually coming in from the top side here, definitely going to get some damage done. Waiting for that Q to come out. Misses the Q actually, but this is definitely going to be a kill here. Really nice kill from the Vladimir going in there and pooling. He saw the Annie actually turn around, and you have to assume that she was going to try to take down that Vlad with her as she went down, but really uh, bad stuff there, and Annie's flash was down from the earlier attempt at a kill. And that really just goes to show, you know, if you don't pick up that kill, then you're going to be in a lot of trouble, because um, if you can get that kill, you're basically going to enable yourself to go back, shop, make yourself that much more um, resilient or damaging to a gank, so... She would have been able to put out more damage and potentially picked up a kill there, but she didn't uh, go back, she didn't shop, and even if she would have, she didn't have that kill under her belt. Looks like Lee Sin is really harassing top, and uh, more harassment even coming out from the uh, the Wukong onto the Riven. So Riven actually going up pretty low after that death, and Wukong now having two Doran's Blades and a Cloth Armor, as well as some health potions, certainly out-itemizing uh, out -item this Riven with just the Longsword and the Cloth Armor. Um, just ridiculous. He's actually, you know, ahead a significant amount as far as lane power right now. And it looks like actually Lee Sin coming in here trying to uh, pick off this Nocturne who's going for the red buff. Wukong, you can assume, is coming down here as uh, Lee Sin is forced to flash away, sends out another resonating strike. That's not going to work. And Lee Sin actually coming into the jungle here, seeing what he can get done. But this, uh, you know, the lizard actually isn't, uh, isn't actually auto attacking there. Um, it's just sending out the animation. So Lee Sin not able to pick up that kill, and uh, Wukong not able to uh, help out that there either. I actually think that Wukong has gone back at this point in time. But yeah, so this is, this, again, you know, back to this mid lane, actually picking up a Negatron Cloak. So that's really, really a very cool item to be getting there before finishing off the, uh, the Revolver. I honestly don't think that Revolver is all that effective until you're outputting uh, a little bit more damage. So this is, you know, not a bad call at all. Picking up the Negatron Cloak, survivability over, you know, basically the Negatron Cloak is going to do its job in replacing that uh, that item there. And actually, we've got some action down bottom here, and that's definitely going to be a kill, as Alistar is uh, pretty confident in relinquishing that to the uh, the vein there for a kill. So, uh, pretty clear kill going off there, and I think it was just that Sona got left alone, and potentially was making too aggressive of a play, got caught up, and most likely headbutted backwards, and just... Couldn't really do much about it. Nocturne's going to come in through the backside here. And, uh, yeah, does actually spell shield the, uh, the power, the fireball there from Annie. Trying to get that, uh, that fear off. But unfortunately for Nocturne, the, the, the tether on the, uh, I'm going to call it a tether or the leash on the fear ability there is actually a little bit shorter. It's gotten a, a small nerf recently. And actually, Wukong just trying to duke it out with this, uh, this Riven up top here, and Riven now just has a Madrids, and that's still significantly behind the Cloth Armor, two Doran's Blades, and a single Health Potion of the uh, of the Wukong here. So really, really, you know, not uh, not impressed with um, the concept of engaging there. 
Vladimir actually picking up another kill on Lee Sin here. Going on a killing spree this early in the game. It looks like actually Annie down to 87 health now. Most likely by the time Vlad catches her, it's going to be, uh, you know, well over 100. And another kill actually going down up top here. So a lot of a, a lot of craziness happening across the map here as Wukong does pick up the kill on Riven. So like I said, not very impressed. And this is going to be a lot of uh, CS, a lot of gold going across here. I would actually argue that this is... Um, two, four, six, eight, and then there was one that went down here. That's definitely, um, well over, uh, 300 gold that went down there. So 300 gold plus, um, all that experience, and the experience is definitely going to be a major factor here. And even more CS getting picked off there. Nocturne coming in the backside here, getting a, uh, very successful gank off. This is definitely going to pick off the, wow, not, not successful at all. Double kill actually going off and potentially, potentially a triple kill. So I thought that was actually going to be really effective, but Nocturne must have jumped in there with a very, very low health. Um, really bad stuff there, actually. Picking up a double kill for the Sona, which actually isn't going to be too big of a deal, but with the, I, I have to assume that Kog'Maw got assists off of that. Just taking a look. Uh, no, actually, no assists, but um, either way, that's going to disable Vayne from staying in lane and CSing, and that's also going to lower the, uh, the effectiveness of the jungle. And actually, up top here, we do have... Uh, Wukong trying to duke it out here again, getting a kill on the Riven yet again. So, yeah, she knows she lost top, but it's it's absolutely ridiculous. It's completely her fault, though. Like, I mean, even even as a... I, I don't assume that I'm uh, at the same ELO level at these guys yet, but uh, they, you know, just made some really, really poor decisions, in my honest opinion. Looks like, actually... Uh, Dragon might be gone for it here as bottom and mid lane have cleared out. Bottom lane has pushed in forward and this Dragon is certainly going to be going down here. Alistar is going to try to go in there and see what's going on, but he's he's going to find that the Dragon has already been taken as uh, Lee, you see Lee Sin in the background running away here. You've got a blue buff on Kog'Ma too, and that's actually going to be really, really painful. He's going to be able to spam that W ability, which is going to do percentages constantly, and he's going to outrange the enemy opponents pretty well the entire time that blue buff is active, so um, not going to be uh, all that great for the uh, not all that great for the vein. And uh, yeah, just Riven trying to get back into this game. I haven't actually taken a look at the CS yet, and uh, yeah, Alistar absolutely knows <coughs> that that's gone. And uh, Nocturne jumping in here, trying to get yet another gank off. Ultimate comes out there, stun going off on the Nocturne, so Annie's going to pick up a kill here, but I think Vlad is as well. Yeah, there goes the ultimate, so Vlad's going to pick that up. Pick up red buff in the process, not really going to do much, but I would have to say that the two main factors of this game that are kind of failing for uh, Anax's team here is definitely the top lane and the jungle, which is going to be really brutal because they're not really going to have an initiator. Alistar certainly can pull it off, but uh, even with his ultimate, he's still extremely squishy um, as... You know, Nocturne and Riven at least get some resistances in their uh, their wriggles, and you know they typically build pretty tanky, and their their base healths are pretty good as well. And, and as they level, but uh, yeah, so one thing that is going very well for Anax's team though is uh, basically himself and the Vlad. The Vlad is actually smashing the Annie and CS. You can see here, 43 to 84, and he's got four kills to the one kill. So this Vlad is definitely going to be a determining factor here. Um, Riven doing a nice job there of uh, picking up the Lee Sin, so finally trying to find our way back into this game, though with the 47 CS compared to the 77 there, just absolutely ridiculous. Mid lane has gone down though, so just, you know, really strong play here sh showing from the Vlad. And I really do agree with Vlad um, being seen in this game. I honestly think he's a really underestimated as a champion. I mean, his, his build consists of a Will of the Ancients, which is all benefits. It doesn't really take away from him, whereas characters with mana, I feel like it definitely does take away from them. Um, you don't really get your uh, maximized damage output, and you have to be concerned with um, your mana consumption and what have you. You can't really spam abilities and just constantly heal up. Whereas with Vlad, it's a, it's a huge, huge item. Spell vamp, 25% spell vamp. It helps your team. It helps you significantly in lane. You do more damage, and it gives him more health. So um, you can't really argue with that. It looks like actually Nocturne trying to catch up this this uh, <laughs> Lee Sin, but he's just going to get completely dominated here. This is a really terrible play from the Nocturne. I have no idea what he's doing. He's 
He's really throwing away this game. Vladimir coming up top lane, trying to get a gank off on the uh, Wukong here, trying to help out his buddy Riven. And uh, I think at the very least, Wukong's now forced to leave the lane. It's just going to allow Riven to safely farm up, and uh, that's exactly what she needs at this point in the game. Now Vlad's going to come back into this lane, try to CS here, and with Annie actually having already used her ultimate, that's not really going to be a good situation for her, as uh, I think Vlad could definitely, definitely 1v1 her at this point. Yeah, he's actually even just healing up off of the bear, trying to actually kill it. Tibbers is actually worth quite a bit, guys. If you guys didn't know that, Tibbers is worth 50 gold, which is... That's huge. That's a huge amount of gold. If you can get a last hit on Tibbers, I mean, absolutely do it. Um, it's worth more. It's worth, like, double a regular CS, so it's, you know, it's good. Down at bottom lane here, we do have three characters there trying to chase out Anax. I don't think he's going to be... Uh, too concerned with that, though. He still does have close to a 1,000 health. Going to be going up to a 1,000 health uh, relatively soon here with that lifesteal. And uh, doing a small amount of harassment on the Kog'Maw as well. But Vladimir is going to come down here, catching them in a really nice position. Blind ultimate and actually using his W there. Really smart play here. Using that W to get the slow off in a blind... Uh, Basically a blind slow, and it looks like Anax is going to pick this one up as well. No, Vlad actually going to go in there. So Vlad is definitely going to be the character to watch right now. Lee Sin jumping all over this uh, Alistar as well as Annie. Or sorry, yeah, that is Annie. Um, jumping all over the Alistar as well. And Vlad is going to have to try to find a way out of this one. He's probably going to pick up a kill in the process, though. He's getting Lee Sin down really low. And he's actually not taking a, a lot of damage at all. As uh, that Negatron Cloak is working wonders for him. He's going to jump in here, try to figure this out. Uh with uh, Anax on Vayne going in there, trying to pick that up as well. Really nice play there coming out from all these characters. And actually Vlad taking uh, quite a bit of damage from the tower as well. So really, really smart play there, actually turning things around. And you can see here, getting that Negatron Cloak is a huge, huge uh, benefit. Actually picking up another Hextech Revolver, which I believe he's just going to hold on to. It's kind of like a Doran's items almost, except for just significantly more powerful. Yeah, you can see here Anax actually saying carry us, Vlad, because I think that's the ca what the case is right now. But taking a look at the CS is uh, certainly something that could turn this around as Riven actually picks up another kill. So turning things around up at top, not too shabby, nice comeback. Um, you do have 74 CS compared to the 96 of Wukong. However, I feel like with this, uh, this wave here and the ability to CS uh, this all down, Riven's definitely going to catch up very, very quickly here. Now 16 behind, not too bad. Um, whereas you have roughly 50 behind, or 45, 46, something like that behind in mid lane for the Annie, and a Anax is actually slightly a couple ahead of the Kog'Maw. That's pretty well tied up, though. Nocturne, uh, pretty far ahead as well of the Lee Sin, and uh, basically all the way across the board, though, I think the favor is definitely go going to go towards um, Anax's team by about 20 because of the Vlad, and actually another kill coming up there for Anax, so um, he's definitely finding a way very quickly into this game. He's going to be going for most likely a Bloodthirster here. He does have a Zeal. I would definitely um, argue, and if you guys watch my Tristana game, you know that uh, I would definitely argue for the Infinity Edge with the Zeal rather than the Bloodthirster. Um, it's going to give you significantly more damage, and the crits coming out of the Zeal isn't really going to do nearly as much as crits coming out of a uh, an Infinity Edge. And you've already the spell vamp is good enough off of a Vampiric Scepter. It looks like actually this dragon could get stolen here, but no, it looks like dragon is going to go down. So a nice benefit here coming way back into this game. So um, Anax's team is actually doing really, really well. However, with all those kills on Vlad, with 7 of the 12 kills on Vlad, that's actually not what you're going to want to see. Um in a game like this, especially a high, well, actually, no, I would argue that in higher level games, it's better to have all the kills on one person, so that they can, uh, they can carry really well, actually, it looks like Nocturne jumping all over the Sona, and, uh, get it, Sona getting caught in the wall, actually, that was kind of weird, um, so Anax is gonna pick up yet another kill, going to 3-0, and, uh, Really, really good stuff there. Um, really nice plays coming up from Nocturne, picking his spots really well. That's actually something that I definitely can't do as Nocturne. My Nocturne is complete garbage. And a nice spell shield there coming out from the Nocturne, dodging that uh, that uh, extra damage ability from Wukong. Wukong, though, nice ultimate there, um, popping up the... Uh, the the Alistar, Alistar's gonna have to run away from that one, and Nocturne actually going really low as well. Nice kill though in the background, getting picked up by this Vayne, and Vayne's actually gonna come down here, try to pick up the Kog'Maw. Nice headbutt there coming out from Al uh, 
Alistar and uh, Wukong trying to get the kill here onto the... Uh, oh, but a really, really lucky dodge coming out from the... Uh, from the Wukong, but Anax is going to pick up yet another kill, so wow. Even with the dodge, Anax still just outskilling them and just, just smashing it, so I can see why he wanted me to cast this game. This game is just really beautiful play all the way across the board. And he is going to go back and shop, so we're going to see here, actually, I believe he can afford it in Infinity Edge. Yeah, he can. Um, I would definitely condone an Infinity Edge over a Bloodthirster, but a lot of people do prefer the Bloodthirster, and uh, yeah, I'm going to finish that off into a Phantom Dancer. Um, you know, it's it's arguable which is the better way to go, but uh, if you're looking for more guaranteed damage rather than relying on crits, I would say, yeah, Bloodthirster is definitely the way to go. You're going to get more damage out of your items, but, uh, you know, I, I am the kind of guy who absolutely loves the idea of critting constantly, and when you're critting for 250% damage, it's just absolutely silly. Um, Ribbon try coming in here, trying to get up a kill, and uh, not going to happen. Uses the Ignite and doesn't actually finish off the ult. So, um, unfortunate for her, but uh, Vlad actually coming in here, trying to get some kills. Is going to take out the Annie, potentially. Yes, is going to get the Annie, and it's going to flash away. Maybe going to get away. No, the Resonating Strike is going to pick up that kill. So, uh, Vlad going in there, going one for one. I don't think that was the, w the right way to go. He was legendary, and he was worth significantly more gold than what that Annie was worth. So... Definitely a bad play there, unless he would have picked up two kills, but um, even then, I don't know if it would have been necessarily the best play. Nocturne's going to step in there and try to chase these guys out, but uh, that's not going to happen for him. As uh, you do have Kog'Maw up a top lane, you can see Kog'Maw is going for the Infinity Edge here. I couldn't imagine him switching over and getting in a Bloodthirster. I think it would actually be more expensive for him to get a Bloodthirster at this point. But uh, yeah, probably going to pick up the Infinity Edge, and we'll see basically which is going to do um, better for who. But based on how this Kog'Maw has been playing, I can't imagine that he's going to be doing all that well, especially against a Vayne who's just been tearing him apart. Uh, and not to mention, you know, roughly 20 CS ahead, uh, 18 CS for, um, for Anax. Going to be doing really good stuff here. And uh, this Sona just in the middle of nowhere, just getting bounced around by the Alistar, no big deal. All right, so we have reached uh, finally our first little lull in the action here, and uh, Dragon should be coming up relatively soon, maybe within the next minute or two, and uh, that's certainly going to be a point of uh, of tension. And wow, a lot of stuff coming out here. Vayne picking up yet another kill, going up to seven and zero, um, and most likely another kill there. Vayne's going to pick that one up as well, even though the Q on Vlad did come out. Um, lots of damage going on to this Nocturne, who has just been playing really, really poorly this entire game. Whether he's a great player or not, um, which he should be at this this uh, level of ELO, I definitely don't think that uh, he's having the best game. Nice quadra kill there, actually, coming out from Anax Mander. I completely missed that. Um, picking up those two kills and actually lacing them together at a... I actually thought it was a little bit too late for him to guarantee uh, an actual quadra kill here, but really nice stuff there. This Bloodthirster going up really quickly, up to 29 out of 40 right now, so... Um, Definitely going up very, very quickly here. And actually, this could be the end of the game at just 21 minutes. It's going to be... No, uh, it looks like Anax is going to decide to leave. And without your range AD there to punch out these towers, you're not going to be able to pick those up very quickly. Now I'll start deciding to laugh as he runs away from that one. Um, so finally, Riven, you know, I think she's actually made a very significant comeback here. She's actually ahead now of the Wukong, who was just destroying her in lane. And uh, she's got the same amount of kills... And she's ahead in CS, so that's always a really strong showing there. The ability to come back is just phenomenal. Um, now picking up the BF Sword, Brutalizer, Wriggles, obviously just, just very strong choices of items there. And most likely going to be turning that into a Bloodthirster. Um, Infinity Edge, not really the best way to go about things with uh, your abilities that scale so heavily. Nice kill there going up from Vlad, uh, as well as the uh, the Alistar being in there. Nocturne's going to jump all over this Annie. And uh, with Vlad there in the picture as well... And he's going to flash away from that one, though. Really, really low health. But a nice ultimate there from Nocturne, securing that kill. And uh, it looks like Riven's going to jump over top of this one. And a huge kill there. Nice stuns. Nice pop-up going up there. And uh, this is actually ridiculous. The, the game could be ending here at 23 minutes legitimately um, with the, the actual Nexus going down here. Uh, Riven's going to come in here, punch down this tower as quick as possible. Down to 100 health. And down it goes. So... Fantastic play, actually, all the way across the board. A nice quadra there, and uh, huge, huge items coming out at this point in the game. Almost uh, relatively close to uh, 
uh, an Infinity Edge Bloodthirsty Fan Dancer right at the end of this game and she's trying to pick up a kill on Lee Sin at the spawning pool, forcing him back up. But yeah, wow, uh, fantastic play there and a really great replay. I'm glad I got to ca cast this. So if you guys want to see me cast more of this stuff, um, head on over to VVV Games. Um, or sorry, it's VVV Gaming uh, and uh, or dot com. Just go check out that site. Check out the community. It's a really good team. And, uh, you know, uh, send out your thanks to VVV and Axmander for giving me these replays. And if you guys want to see more, seriously, do uh, I do recommend that you, <laughs> you know, if you know any pro players, you want their games commentated or something like that, send them my way. And please do send a big thank you to VVV Gaming for sending me these replays. Um, I look forward to giving you guys more uh, top-level replays. So this is Frank, your all-knowing gamer, guys. Until next time, hope you enjoyed. Peace out.